The Minnesota Lynx eased up on their playoff push as fans and merchandise lined up the Mall of America Rotunda for the fourth annual Catwalk for a Cure. As Lynx popularity rises, so does the mission of advocacy. Breast cancer for us affects almost all women. There are a few men in the percentage, but it's you know 80% women. So uh, for us to have this opportunity um, to do something fun, not only for us, but for the fans and to support breast health awareness is amazing. As I'm kind of venturing out and understanding like all the different diseases and, and illnesses that are affecting us, especially women, um, you know, I, I've met a lot more people um, that are affected by breast cancer to different variation, like variations of them. It's, it's really, um, so just to be able to like talk about that and just do it in a way where, in a, in a runway style thing where it's kind of like everyone can view you. It's the Mall of America. It's just like, it's a really awesome, I think, way to like tie in kind of what I've always stood for. Relegated to the mall's courts in previous years, the links were featured in the landmark's largest staging area for the first time. Despite their current status as a hot ticket among Twin Cities residents and media, players are still in awe over the community's respect. Oh, this is the creme de la creme. I know this is the big show. We had people all, you know, every level like watching us today. I hope, you know, we gained a lot of new fans today and it was great for our, our uh, loyal fans that have been with us to, to be here and, and experience this with us as well. I just think that it's a reflection of where the links have come and it's really exciting to be a part of it. Are you guys ready to get the show underway? All right, well they're ready, so I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping our ladies are ready. So let's go ahead and get it started. We're gonna kick it off with Jess Adair. Jessica Adair kicked off the 2012 rendition with a black top and butterfly skirt from Maurice's. Rookie forward Devro Peters sported a brown leather dress from Banana Republic for her first design. Lynx forward Rebecca Brunson followed with an elegant evening dress provided by Long Tall Sally. Lynx guard Erin Thorne traded her usual colors of blue and silver for a yellow dress from Banana Republic. Monica Wright, unable to attend last year's catwalk event, returned with flair with her own purple and black outfit. Um, I can't wait to see this one because you know it's going to be fun. Let's let's invite Simone Augustus up here. What has she got for us? Uh-oh. Uh-oh was right as the 2011 WNBA Finals MVP eschewed standard perceptions of elegance with camouflage shorts and a black sweatshirt from Little Wayne's truck fit line of skateboard clothing. Lindsay Whalen introduced Group 2 with a pencil skirt and magenta silk ruffled v-neck from Banana Republic. Amber Harris followed with red jeans, a tank, and leather jacket from Long Tall Sally. The 2011 Rookie of the Year, Maya Moore, introduced herself with what Leah B. Olsen called a sassy shirt with sensible heels. Fashion guru Taj McWilliams Franklin and her daughter, Maya, continued their tradition of designing and showcasing their own apparel.
The outfit, the first outfit I wore, I was like at a store and I was kind of just like, and then I saw it sparkling from, a, from across the room and it was just like, it just made me like happy. You know, I try to, you know, show my little personality, have fun out there on the stage, but you know, I think Candace kind of showed us up this year. She, she had a ball with the outfits that she had to do. You have to just pick the outfit that you love, you know, that, I think that's, shopping's the biggest part. And, um, you know, just having fun with it the whole time. What do you do in the morning when you get up? Do you, do you take the gold medal out? Do you look at it? Do you put it on? Do you shower with it? What do you do when you have a gold medal? Um, well, the thing is, um, it, sits on my, it sits on the counter. It sits on the counter. It stays there because it's very heavy, which I've, <laughs> I've said before um, a couple times. But then also because it's kind of one of those things that it's like you don't want to lose it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Because if you lose it, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, irreplaceable. So I don't want to lose it. So I just kind of keep it at the house and I just every couple hours, you know, every, every couple Wandering. minutes, you know, in between, uh, uh, you know, episodes of whatever show I'm watching that night, I make sure it's there. Office, Parks and Rec. Got it. Good shows, good shows. Whatever, you know, whatever's on, whatever's on that oh. night. Um, and yeah, just make sure it's still there, so. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, thank you guys for all the support while we were over there, it was, it was yeah. a lot of fun, thank you. So fun, so fun to watch you. Amber, okay. Amber, come on up. Big, you, you know, we're done with that whole rookie season thing. Now you're in that big second year, feeling good. How, just kind of give us what it feels like now that you kind of put that rookie stuff behind. Uh, it feels good. Uh, I don't have to go chasing balls no more and shoot around. So it feels <laughs> That's good. what they make the rookies do, right? You have to yeah. chase the balls. Okay. It feels good. Uh, I have no other words for it. It just feels good. So, and how you know how has it been feeling just this year for you and? Um, as you guys are looking to do that whole repeat thing again and in the confidence and does how does it feel different if it does? Um, um it feels good. <laughs> I mean we're 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 focused, uh, you know, just trying to take it one day at a time and uh, we're just we're just I don't know, we're just focused. All right. Thank you. We like focus. Focus is good. Thank you, Amber. All right, Maya, Maya, Maya. Now, Maya, everyone's telling me, I didn't, I actually did not know this, but something about you being a very talented musician. What? <laughs> this is, um, okay, so you just love, you love music, you just love. I do. You do love music, okay. I absolutely do. And um, drumming, you can, you can play the drum. I used to be an in the closet drummer, um, but my secret's out, so. You can Most people thing. know that that's one of my hobbies. Yeah, I've been drumming since I was about 10 years old. Bought my own set. Nice. Uh, washed some neighborhood cars and my mom's co-workers' cars and saved up some money. I was a saver as a kid, you know. I didn't spend my money. I saved it and bought my drum set. And nice. The rest is history. Very nice. Mama Taj. The beautiful Maya. It's so fabulous and great to see you up here with your daughter. Tell us how that influences what you do on the court and what you do at home, just having three beautiful daughters. Wow, I get the tough question. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess it's important for me because um, I have little ones looking up to me. Um, and I always want to be the role model uh, that they can look up to and, and strive to be like, not a basketball player, but just the amount of um, hours, the amount of time, the amount of dedication that it takes to do what I do for so many years. And so when I meet other people's kids, boys or girls, uh, I try to be that person that they can look up to also. Um, that they know that no matter what you do, whether it's basketball, softball, tennis, football, um, that there's someone out there that was just like you and uh, who has achieved some success. Um, it, it took me a long time. I went to a very small college. Um, I started playing really late, so all the things that I've achieved have been because of hard work and because I've had positive people putting Absolutely. positive things in my life. 
Can we ask Maya a question? Sure. My Maya, not that Maya. <laughs> <laughs> we have to differentiate. Yeah, we have Maya, what, what, how exciting and what is it like to be able to say, yeah, my mom plays in the WNBA, she's all good, been in the league forever, she's fabulous. What is that like having a mom like that? Do the kids ask you about it at school? No, they don't. They don't ask me about it. It's kind of fun now. Is it fun going to the games? Holding up the sign, go mom. It is really fun. Her daughter just like, she's so like inspired by her mom. So uh, Maya has like her own little style too. And she's got her own like point of view. It's really rare that for kids that young to have like her own like distinct point of view. And she has it, so it's awesome. For us, you know, I'm home drawing up designs, looking through magazines. And so when she sees me, I'm like, hey, look through a magazine. You might like a design. You know, she's only nine, so some of the designs she likes are a little adult, so we just taper it down to work and fit her. She wanted her shirt to look like Candace. I said, sure, as long as you put her undershirt under it. So, I mean, age appropriate is always cool, but um, the fact that she's able to draw and design, she drew that design, and then we found the pieces to fit, and she made the pants. So, um, creativity in our house is top, top. Candace, so we knew it was going to be fabulous and funky and fun, but if we were looking in your closet, what else would we find? Oh my gosh, you'd see like just millions of like sparklies and stuff. She's a sparkly um, I was going for like a little like Americana theme, you know, an ode to Lindsay and Maya and Simone and um, just, you know, proud to be an American. Yeah, you know, yeah, there we go. <laughs> but um, no, my closet, it's just really just random stuff. I love a lot of color and um, lots of, you know, like I said, sparkles and just things that make me smile. And it kind of carries over from your big personality on the court, that enthusiasm that gets all the crowd in it. Is that the kind of the carry over there? I think so. I think it's really, you know, I think clothes are really reflective of, you know, who you are as an individual. And for me, I just like, you know, I just love to smile and just have a lot of energy in life. So that's how I dress. You see the smiling faces and everyone's so exciting, uh, excited about, uh, about the opportunity, the auctions, you know, the breast cancer uh, awareness. Um, you know, fun that we have going on. It's, it's just an awesome opportunity for us to share uh, our love for and appreciation to our fans. We're really close this year, really close as a team. Um, we have fun with each other. We like being around each other, and I think it shows on the court. Even in adversity, um, we all just bring it all together and fight together for something bigger than us. Jess A. Dare's second look highlighted pink jeans, a white tank, and black blazer from Long Tall Sally. Devro Peters channeled Express with her second outfit, wearing a bright orange skirt she proudly showcased by walking backwards. Rebecca Brunson donned a red blazer, white top, and gray shorts from Maurice's for her second appearance. Erin Thorne switched from yellow to red alert with her second ensemble, with Leah B. Olson promoting the look as solid beachwear. Monica Wright's alternate look also came from her own wardrobe, leaving fans glowing over the punk genre. Simone Augustus traveled the denim direction with her second design, including stonewashed jeans and Chuck Taylors. I had a lot of fun this year with Devereaux, the rookie, and because um, I, I picked my outfit up pretty fast, so um, when we were in the mall, I was just able to just kind of like take Devereaux and just dress her up, and we, I was just dragging her around saying, try this on, and she was like a Barbie doll, and I played with Barbies like for a really long time. We have already asked your teammates about what it's like having that gold. I know you brought, this is number two for you. So what does it feel different, and then talk about being out there with your teammates. 
Um, this one was definitely, you know, better for me. Um, just coming back off of injuries and everything I've been through over the last few years, it just kind of helped uh, help me overcome all that fear that I had of possibly not even making a team at one point to, mm -hmm. to be there and hold a gold medal and to be there with, you know, Waylon and Maya is awesome. But it's not even my medal, it's for my mother. She was like, <laughs> as of Saturday when we play Atlanta, I see her there, she was like, bring me my medal. So, <laughs> Mama deserves that medal. I'm with yeah. her on that. Very nice. Um, and then what was it like just to kind of make that transition so quickly, just playing so intensely, having the world watching you and then getting back here and getting right back into it? You know, it's fun when you get an opportunity to play with the world's best players on one team and, you know, every day we're challenging each other, we're competing against each other, making each other better. It's, it's no better feeling than that. And to get back here, I was so excited to see my teammates and they were excited to see us. It was just like a happy moment at uh, Lynx practice on that Wednesday when we returned. So I'm just excited to be back here and, you know, possibly roll the repeat, right? There we go. Monica. All right. How are you doing, Miss Cheetah? I'm doing well. How y'all doing? <laughs> All right now. Very fun. Okay, so um, what what else is this? What we would see you in if we were just seeing you? It wasn't a game day. You were just home chilling out. Is this what we would see you in? <laughs> no, you would see me wearing this on my couch watching TV. No. <laughs> 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 no, it's just something that I pulled together for only my Lynx fans, my dearest Lynx fans. All right, so. only for you guys. Let's see who, Aaron, you want to come on up? Sure. Great. Now, your looks have been, you know, very color friendly, um, sassy. Tell us a little bit about your style. Um, I, I was just having fun with the shopping. Uh, when we got to go pick out our outfits, I just tried to bring some color into it. Like you said, with the yellow, I thought, hey, that's perfect. We walked into Banana, and it was hanging on the wall, and I said, there it is, right there. It took me two seconds to find it, so perfect. just trying to find some color. What is it like, Erin, to have a stage like this, a platform to um, help support breast cancer awareness in the state of Minnesota, but to really have a platform where people are listening? Um, th this is huge. This is the fun part for us, too. Um, you know, yes, the basketball part is fun as well. Um, but this is where we get to give back and, and to have these opportunities to raise money and raise awareness for something like breast health awareness is huge for us. The these are the moments um, outside of the court that we remember. All right. Well, thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Rebecca. No one should look that good in shorts. Okay. Um, so now, give us a little insight on um, when the ladies were off at the Olympics. You guys were doing some fun stuff, a little team bonding. I, did I see a picture of like some dancing stuff? We you did. did. What, what um, that we about? actually did Zumba. That was one of the things. Um, some, some Zumba. Some Zumba. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was nice. It was fun. Um, but we also did yoga, Pilates, we went paddle boarding, which was also a lot of fun. Um, we just a lot, did a lot of things to keep us going, so it didn't get monotonous. We didn't get, you know, too run down with practice, but we still kept ourselves in shape and got to enjoy each other's company. What's it like for you? Because when you watch you play, it's just so athletic and you just work so hard. So when you're talking to little girls, what, you know, what is usually your message to them? Um, my message is usually with exactly what you said, to work hard. Um, you don't have to be the most talented person at what you do. You don't have to be the most athletic, the tallest, the quickest. Um, you don't have to be the best scorer, but you can always work harder than somebody. And something that I always tell myself is that's something that's always within my control. I might not make every shot or get every rebound, but I can continue to work hard. So that's something I like to tell the younger ones. All right. Thank you. Devereaux, should we pick on the rookie? The rookie's here. How has it been? Have, have, how's the team been treating you with the whole rookie thing? Uh, Moan is really mean, but, <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, they've all been great. I actually was terrified to come here, but everybody was so warm and welcoming, and it just made it so much easier for me. Now, um, the leather dress. That was super yeah. fabulous. Are you going to keep that? Because you should. I, you know, 
actually Wiggs picked it out. I can't even take credit. Wiggs picked it oh. out. She was like my personal shopper that day. I was her Barbie. And um, yeah, I like the dress though, so I'm, I might actually go get that. Okay, we like that. And then post basketball, after you've won a few championships here and you know, a few 10 years down the line, it, this runway might be a platform <laughs> for you. We'll see, we'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I yeah, agree. <laughs> All right, let's bring Jess up Hello, here, Miss Jess Adair. How are you? How are you? Good. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Tell us about how you're feeling this year. What's? Give us a little bit about the vibe of this team and how it feels for you. Um, well, it's like family. We're all like family. Uh, we we have great chemistry. We play well together. Um, winning a championship last year adds to that, you know. So. Um, I'm loving it. You're loving it. And being at an event like this, when you get to see the people who support and are always there, and you get to see them up close, what's that like? Uh, well, we like to do it for the fans. Um, everything we do, we come out, we play hard, we like to put on a nice show, and this is just a little something extra, you know. Perfect. Thank you. We have people roaming around in the Mall of America that might not be season ticket holders. And they see this fun, excitement stuff going on, and they're like, man, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. And so for us, it's always about who else we can bring in to this big, happy party that we have called the WNBA. Lindsay Whalen's second look featured dark washed boot cut jeans, a white top, and navy cardigan from Banana Republic, complete with a wrist watch. Amber Harris blended casual and stylish with white capris and a black shirt with gold stripes from Long Tall Sally. The playful Maya Moore used a white and purple color scheme for her final design. The extroverted forward even shared a moment with VIP ticket holders. Assistant coach Jim Peterson suggested he was not quite ready to let go of summer with his bright outfit. The second creation from Taj McWilliams Franklin was inspired by Asian designs, mixing a plethora of colors. The dress featured a very revealing backside from a post who is not shy about her age. Assistant coach Shelly Patterson communicated that whether it's 5 or 50, shades of gray will always complement the person wearing it. Candace Wiggins brought her own example of what comprises her wardrobe with a pink dress. Minnesota's three-point specialist is also a master of very high heels, earning the envy of Leah Bielson. Despite all the cheers, head coach Cheryl Reeve retained her title for loudest ovation at the charity event. Kind of swagger jacked me a little bit. No. Um, no, of course. I mean, she's still wearing it. She loves it. She loves this. This is like her, I know this is her favorite look, like, of the year. But no, she did surprise me. I didn't think it was, I thought it would be really hard for her to upstage herself from last year, but she did. OMG. Look, we're trying to get her to wear it next Thursday for the home game. If, oh my God, that outfit was, that was that was the best outfit of, of them all. Like, that took the cake of everything. And the hair, we're going to try to get her for the San Antonio game. If she wear that on the sideline, you know, that's, that'll be the best. Maya. Maya. How does it feel to be the baby of the team and also one of the strongest players? <laughs> Technically, by four months, I'm older than Devereaux. <laughs> So I'm, I'm the second baby. But uh, I do enjoy lifting. I like being strong. Uh, our, our 
trainers, they do a good job of making us work on the little muscles, which makes such a big difference, if you can believe it. Preventative uh, work to make sure that we stay healthy, but um, if I wasn't covered up with these sleeves, I might give you a little gun show. <laughs> Coach Reeve. Coach Reeve, honey. <laughs> Now, now, as someone who myself went to high school in the 80s, I'm wondering if you two did and that's from your high school days. <laughs> well, I was told there's a theme to my catwalk attire. Last year was kind of 80s-ish. Uh, 80s-ish, yes, this was my high school prom dress. <laughs> Not really. This question's for Lindsay. I just want to know who oh your, your favorite Minnesota Viking is and who your favorite Green Bay Packer is. Oh. 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 Put me on the spot. Is there a favorite? Um, favorite of all time or favorite right now? Viking. Which one? Of all time or, or now? For now. For right now, well... Right now, I would have to say, I have to say AP, Adrian Peterson. But, Good answer. I'll answer of all time, too, Anthony Carter. Oh. The second part. What's that? The second part, Green Bay. No. Pa <laughs> I, 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 I here. Are you angry at everybody? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty tough for a Minnesota uh, native. It, Green Bay kind of hits you home like uh. We're really close this year, really close as a team. Um, we have fun with each other, we like being around each other, and I think it shows on the court, even in adversity. Um, we all just bring it all together and fight together for something bigger than us. Now each year the Lynx Foundation presents a grant at the annual Catwalk for a Cure for, to a deserving nonprofit doing their part to advance research, awareness, and support for breast cancer in the state of Minnesota. This year's application process was as competitive as ever, but in the end, the Minnesota Lynx chose SAGE to receive the 2012 Lynx Foundation Grant. SAGE's mission is to provide free breast and cervical cancer screening, diagnostics, and treatment services to uninsured and underinsured Minnesota women. The Minnesota Department of Health SAGE screening program is a year-round screening program that offers free breast exams, mammograms, and PAPS tests to eligible women age 40 and up and is available at over 400 clinics um, and uh, hospitality statewide. So thank you for that. Presenting this year's $5,000 check is Minnesota Lynx Community Relations Manager, Amanda Collins. And accepting the check on behalf of SAGE is Sarah Hawley. Hi, Sarah. SAGE, uh, Program Recruitment and Outreach Coordinator for the Department of Health. Well, thank you. We, on behalf of the Minnesota Department of Health SAGE Screening Program, we want to thank the Minnesota Lynx Foundation organization and definitely the world champion team um, for this great honor. This check will go towards supporting the SAGE program in so many different ways, not only with breast cancer awareness, but to help prevent breast cancer. Um, we encourage all women who are 40 and older to get their yearly mammograms, of course, because um, mammograms save lives. If you want more information about our program, you can call us toll-free at 1-888-6-HEALTH to get a mammogram. And we really want to thank the Minnesota Lynx for supporting our efforts this year. We really appreciate it. Um, so go Lynx. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. All props to all the people working in the offices, like, putting this on. It's, it's, it's just so awesome. It's fun for everybody. And um, I think they, they got a good show today. Before Minnesota's top female basketball team departed, Lynx players gave fans one last exhibit.
and Monica went to watch Step Up for the Revolution. And in the middle of it, we thought, hey, we should do a mob, flash mob. And I was like, uh, maybe we do it at the airport. It might be cool, might not. And then I started thinking and Aaron, and we started coming up with something we can do here at the catwalk. by Lecrae is actually a Christian rap artist. And uh, she knows all the words, so I wouldn't have to teach her because they came in late from the Olympics. I didn't want a song that I had to, she had to learn. And I knew she already knew that song and it's simple and it's got a good beat where everybody can dance. So that's why Maya was picked. To give all the credit to Taj like she put that together and it took about three or four days like when we came back from uh, Seattle we were like on it like we had to get it together like we even did a little bit of practice before we got here uh, in a lifetime fitness center so it was really serious intense we wanted to try to make sure we did the best that we could today for the fans.
every moment I play, it's about having fun. Candace Wiggins loves it, having fun. Monica is free spirit. Simone, Lindsay. I mean, it's just you're living your dream. And when you live the dream, you can't do anything but have fun. And you want to bring people into that dream with you.